Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm really excited tonight because this is going to be a first for me. I was contacted by Bobby Ward and he asked me if I had ever turned Chola. And I hadn't, so he offered to send me a blank that he made. And it's pretty exciting because I always like turning something new that I've never turned before. But he's taken a, a pipe and he's gone ahead and poured resin in it and put the Chola in the resin and I'm gonna get a chance to turn this. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, I'll talk about it as I turn it, tell you what my thoughts are, and hopefully we can turn this into a beautiful pen. There is a twist though. This pen I'm gonna put on a cigar kit. Now that cigar kit I made a while back, but I made a very stupid mistake. I reversed the bushings, so I turned the front half on the back half bushings and the back half on the front half bushings. So we're gonna start off by getting this blank cut to size, We'll get it drilled, and then we're going to take the tubes that have the wood on them that I initially turned. We're going to clean them all the way back down to the brass and get them glued into this blank. And then we'll turn ourselves a really nice cigar pin. Here's the original blank that I turned that I mentioned earlier I had messed up. So I went ahead and laid it on the Chola blank, and you'll notice I left a little extra at the end as well as a little extra on this end. I do that to guard against blowout when I drill any type of an acrylic blank. I'm going to now go ahead and get this cut to size. We'll get this little end cut off. We'll get this blank drilled, and then we'll be ready to clean these tubes off and get them inserted into the blank. The Big Ben pin kit requires a 10 millimeter tube. So we're gonna have to drill a 10 millimeter hole right down the center of this blank. I'm a little nervous because, you know, I, I've not dealt with this type of a blank before and I don't know what to expect. So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna drill really slow and hopefully we can get a good clean hole right down the center. As we get toward the bottom of the blank, we really want to slow down and let the bit cut through. We don't want to force it through because that will increase the potential for blowout. These round blanks are sometimes a little tough to hold. I did notice a little crunch at the end as I broke through, so let's hope it's not too bad. There's the top. Not bad at all, it looks pretty good. A Little bit of blow out there, but I left probably a quarter of an inch on this uh, blank, so we should be able to compensate for that by sliding the tube this way and should have no issue. Let's get the second half drilled out. I shut the camera off for about five minutes and let this bit cool. It had built up quite a bit of heat drilling the first half of the blank. And one thing you never want to do is use a, a hot bit to drill a blank. Your blank can blow out from the heat. That's another reason why we like to clear the bit often because if it packs up with shavings, that increases the heat. It increases the friction, builds extra heat, and can cause the blank to blow apart. So always make sure your bit is cool before you begin drilling half of your blank. I had a very loud crunching sound as I broke through. It always makes me nervous. There's the entry hole and there's the exit hole. And you can see I got some blowout down there on the exit hole. A couple of pieces broke loose. 
I don't think it's going to be a big deal because it only goes back to right there. And I did leave plenty of extra blanks. So I think we're going to be golden. It's really a shame to have to waste this beautiful blank. But when you don't pay attention to which blank goes on which side of the bushings, unfortunately, this is what happens. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned off and we'll prep these tubes to be glued uh, into the Chola blank. tubes are fairly clean. There's still some wood on them. I'm going to go ahead now and just take some sandpaper and sand these down to the brass. That'll accomplish two things. It'll remove the remainder of the wood and it'll also rough the tubes up so they're prepped to go into the blanks. These tubes are cleaned off and ready to go. I'm ready to glue the tubes in my blanks and you'll notice I have the two black hash marks denoting the center of the blank pointing to the right. That's because I generally pick the tube up with my right hand, apply the CA with my left, and then I slide it into the blank. What I want to do before I go any farther is I want to test fit both of these tubes. I want to make sure that there's no obstructions to keep them from going into the blank. They feel pretty good. That one had a little bit of a rough spot, but yep, much better. Now what we'll do is we'll just get some CA, a liberal amount of medium. We'll apply it to the tube. I'm going to put it into the blank. And I'm going to tap it down just below the surface. Okay, you can see that. Let me lay it aside. And we're going to repeat with the second blank. Lots of CA. I like to swirl it around a little bit to kind of get the CA all over the blank. I tap it just below the surface. That way, any of the chip out on this end, you'll see how far down that uh, tube is, is going to disappear whenever we, we uh, cut this off and barrel trim it. I've let the glue dry naturally on this blank, and I'm happy with how it looks. You can see that I've got the, the tube right up north toward the end of the blank. I'm going to have to trim a little bit off of this end and a little bit off of this end, not quite as much. I'm going to go ahead and get these trimmed up. I'll run them across my belt sander, get them nice and flat and true, and we'll pick back up at the lathe where we'll turn these. Things went fairly well over on the bandsaw with the first blank. You can see I've got just a little bit there to sand down, but the second blank posed a problem. I caught the tube with the blade and tore it up a little bit. And look at that. I actually trimmed it back a little too far. I don't think that I've trimmed it back enough to really hurt anything, but we've got to fix that blank. And the way we're going to fix it is I've got a punch here. It's the exact size of this tube, we're gonna slide it through, and I'm just gonna tap it on through with a hammer, and just kind of work it a little bit to make sure that we can, there we go, we round it out. Now when I take this over to the belt sander and sand this down, I'll just take the tube down and just lightly dust the end of the blank. I think we're still gonna be all right. Everything's looking really good on my blank. This is the end that I messed up and you'll notice I can take a punch and drop it right down in there without any resistance. So I'm happy about that. That means that the tube is round and we did lose a tiny bit of the tube. You can see how flat it is. It's nice and flat. We lost a tiny bit of the tube. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that it's not enough to affect the pin. I'm ready to turn this blank from Bob Ward and I am a little bit nervous. Since I ended up taking a pin apart to make this blank, I measured my two blanks. This one is exactly an inch and five eighths, which is what it should be. This one is exactly two inches and it should be two and a sixteenth. Um, that's going to affect me a little bit on assembly. I do have an idea for how to correct that. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it turned. And if all turns well, I'll show you what trick I have up my sleeve to get this pin to work, even with a short blank.
Well, I destroyed this blank. I just about had it turned. I was really liking it. I was just shy down on the bushing on this end, and I was trying to cut it a little closer to the bushing. I got a catch. I can't figure what I caught on because I don't really, unless it was right here, I don't really see anything. Um, I thought about trying to fix it. I've been looking for pieces, but I don't think I can find enough of them to get this first half of the blank turned. Now, one thing Bobby did was he also sent me a half blank. I know that this one has a little bit of light blue in it. I was kind of trying to compare colors. It may be close enough I can make it work. What I'm going to do is take a step back. I'm going to drill this tube out, or this blank out, and I'm going to get this tube turned off and glued into this blank. And we're going to pick up where we left off and see if we can't get this one to work out for us. Good news and bad news. The good news is, since I had a fresh piece of Chola and Alumalite to work with, I grabbed a, another 10 millimeter tube that was exactly uh, two and one sixteenth of an inch in length. Really happy about that. You can see I have a little extra uh, blank on this end, but my CA glue grabbed before I could get the blank all the way in on this end. So I've got a little bit of an overhang there and I'm gonna bet you that that's about a sixteenth of an inch. So I think I'm gonna be stuck with the same problem I had earlier, but I do have a, a simple fix uh, that will help you in the event that you accidentally uh, trim a tube down a little too short. I got the spare blank drilled, tubed, trimmed to the right length, and chucked up on the lathe. Everything looks great. I'm ready to turn. Keep your fingers crossed that I don't blow this one because this is my last opportunity to get this pin made. With my recent luck with this blank, I think this is where I stop. I've got a nice fit at my bushings. I like the shape of the blank. I think I'm going to go straight to sandpaper and get this sanded down smooth. And let's see what she looks like. I kind of like this. I really, I really wish I had uh, the multicolor resin on the back half because that is just incredible. I think it's going to make a beautiful pen. I decided to break my golden rule of only using micro mesh pads wet. And I'm glad I did because I got a beautiful finish. The surface just, it's like a piece of glass. It looks great. There are no scratches in the resin. I'm going to go ahead and get my nonstick bushings on here and let's apply a few coats of CA. We'll start off with a little bit of denatured alcohol. I'm just going to, oh, that's nice. There were some dark spots on this blank that were probably from the resin bleeding into the chola and the denatured alcohol took them right off. I'm just going to let this spin for a few minutes and make sure that it's completely dry before I start applying my CA.
let's go ahead and get this blank installed on a kit. We'll start with the nib. Got a really nice fit. The transmission on this pin, you have an insert that goes into the front half of the pin and it threads on. So let's go ahead and get this insert installed. Really want to, anytime you have these threaded inserts, you want to be really, really careful because they're so easy to, to bend them and mess them up. There we go. Now to install the ink, you basically put the spring on the end of the refill, put it into the front half of the pin, and we thread our transmission. Perfect. Swapping that tube out was just what we needed. For the back half of the pin, we have the nice little trim ring that goes in first. Looks like we're going to need to add a block to our, our press. Okay. Push that all the way together. Oh, we've got a really nice fit there. Real happy with that. And let's put the clip in. And I'm going to take the clip and I'm going to cover up mostly the red because I want to see all of the chola and the, uh, the uh, resin that, that's filling it. So I'm going to do it this way. Press that in. I've got a great fit on that. Make sure my transmission is tight. And there we go. It's different, but I really like it. I'd like to say thank you to Bobby Ward for sending me these Chola and resin blanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a great time turning them. I had never turned Chola before. It, it's tricky, but the end result, as you can see, is well worth the effort. What a gorgeous blank. What a beautiful pen. Thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. I really hope you found this video interesting. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody.